If you could please take your seats, we've got a great show for you tonight. I'd like to kick off, ladies and gentlemen, by introducing myself. For those of you that are new to the Lionhawk Institute, my name is Andrew Work. I was one of the three co-founders and I'm currently a director. Um, it was about nine years ago that myself and uh, two, other, two other young bucks founded the Lion Rock Institute. One of them is right over there, <coughs> Andrew Shunpak Mann, who is, of course, the, the very social Andrew Shunpak Mann, who's uh, going to be getting his friends to sit down. Thank you very much, Andrew. And the other co-founder with me, of course, was Simon Lee, Lee Chow Fu. And Simon is sitting right over here, of course, also socializing, very Lion Rock. Simon Lee and Andrew Shun. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to kick off the evening in a little bit of a different fashion. I'd like to start off with a toast. Now, traditionally, we start with a toast of freedom with Lion Rock, but tonight we're going to have a birthday toast. And if you can all please raise your glasses, uh, it isn't so much a toast for freedom. Tonight it's going to be a toast to something that was a result of the principles of economic freedom and something from which everybody in this room and Hong Kong have benefited for, for 30 years. Today is a 30-year birthday. Does anyone know what birthday that is? I'm sure, I'm sure our financial secretary knows. Of course. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please raise your glasses and a toast to the 30th birthday of the PEG. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hong Kong dollar PEG. To those who created and those who maintain it, in your honor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the PEG has been one of the steadfast, one of the, one of the bedrocks of the Hong Kong economy and Hong Kong success. That kind of steadfastness you also see sometimes in people. When the Lion Rock Institute was founded nine years ago, our institute, as I said, it was founded by three young bucks that didn't know much, but we knew we needed somebody older and wiser than ourselves to take the chairmanship of the organization. That person has been steadfast as the chairman. When he left Credit Suisse, he was still the chairman of Lion Rock. When he left AVA Global, he was still the chairman. He is now the managing partner of Vanda Securities, a cross-asset investment firm. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please help me in welcoming our first speaker this evening, the chairman of the Lion Rock Institute, Mr. William Stacy. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. My steadfastness is failing. I was trying to play badminton last night and my leg gave way on me, so please excuse slightly less mobility than, um, than, than, when, I, um, than when I talk. Thank you very much, Andrew, and, and thank you over the, the many years for your fine work also um, as an entrepreneur in Hong Kong, a promoter of Hong Kong, um, as the principal of the Harbour Times, one of our um, sponsors tonight that's provided you with reading material um, and, uh, and a steadfast um, friend and colleague. Um, tonight um, is our Celebrate Hong Kong Night. This is the second time that we've um, held a, a, this particular event in this format and, and tonight is, I think, a, a, an occasion for, um, uh, for joy and to emphasise the good things about our home city of Hong Kong. Um, the things that have made Hong Kong uh, a beacon for liberty, um, a haven for many people from uh, harsher realms, and uh, the envy uh, of many people, and it's great to see people who have come here from uh, less free places like Canada and, and others to, uh, to, to join us tonight. Thank you, Fred. Um, there are challenges in Hong Kong, as always, when uh, you get seven and a half million people together in a small part of um, uh, southern China and try and get them to cooperate, it's not always easy. Um, however, we at Lime Rock see our best hope of meeting all of those challenges um, in the freedoms and the traditions that have made uh, Hong Kong and us strong. And, and there are just five things that I'd like us to remember tonight um, about the things that do make Hong Kong um, what it is. Um, the first um, is the genius of the idea of positive non-interventionism. The idea um, that there's a lot to be done to provide a framework um, for private endeavour without directing that endeavour, leaving free individuals um, to pursue their own ends but uh, having an umpire, not a player, that sets the rules of the game um, and allows those pursuits to happen in a way um, that is efficient and effective. Um, the creativity in expanding the role of markets that is the precondition 
for the positive part of positive non-intervention um, uh, is an essential part um, of what our um, governments needs to provide. Um, more importantly, this idea of positive non-interventionism is very clear that there's no offers of privilege or favour um, that will help one player on the field um, over any other. Now, of course, one of the great thinkers that originated this idea of positive non-interventionism um, is uh, Copperthwaite, who was the financial secretary in Hong Kong. And I just have a couple of quotes from him in 1966, which I chose to look at when looking for quotes because it was the year of my birth. Um, and, uh, and the year decimal currency was introduced in Australia. And, and I should say, uh, linked exchange rates, um, for the economists here, pegs for everyone else, um, uh, work very well. And Australia shows that, as does Canada, floating exchange rates work very, very well. All of those things in between haven't got such a good track record. So, Copperthwaite said, um, I've been happy in this budget that proposals for increased expenditure have been much less prominent than usual. I bet our financial secretary would like to be able to say that, but probably hasn't in recent years. Not that there have been none. Those that there have been have been mostly, and perhaps surprisingly in our free enterprise economy, proposals for subsidising economic and commercial activities, including some very expensive, indeed open-ended, proposals. Perhaps it is not so surprising after all. It is natural that government intervention by way of subsidy should meet less opposition in the business world than intervention by way of regulation or tax. And, and I think since those times, um, you know, Hong Kong has done much to uh, try and resist special privileges for business. And today that remains um, one of our key challenges. And when I was analysing the budget the other day, I noted that um, subsidies for business in various kinds have been one of the fastest growing areas of the budget. Just a little thing to work on. Sorry, I'm positive apart from that. Um, he also said on an interesting issue that's quite topical about benefits for, um, uh, from businessmen for officials. He said, my honourable friend, Mr. Watson, more generous than those popular entertainers, the Rolling Stones, has invited me to join him on, not his private jet, on his private cloud. The private jet bit was my addition. Um, I hope he will also let me use his remarkable crystal ball, which apparently has a range of a hundred years. I have my own cloud too, so have we all. But who is to say which is the right cloud? But I at least have to achieve the difficult feat of keeping my feet on the ground at the same time as enjoying my cloud. So this is complex rhetoric that you probably don't hear in the Legico anymore, um, but I think it's uh, delightful that uh, uh, Copperthwaite would even um, decline the use of the private cloud of Mr. Watson. So I think positive non-intervention is by no means a doctrine the do-nothing government, as some might accuse it of being. It's a very grounded call for reform, and reform that we think in Hong Kong remains um, urgent and is becoming more urgent. The second thing that I want to briefly mention in celebrating Hong Kong is the excitement of trade. Hong Kong is the ultimate uh, trading city and free port. The gains from free exchange we see um, everywhere around us in this beautiful setting and the beautiful harbour that we have. Um, the value of the middleman, um, you know, pilloried in literature over the ages, um, you know, is, is expressed um, so well in Hong Kong, where, where almost all of us are acting in some intermediary role to facilitate trade, um, could be anywhere in the world. Hong Kong exemplifies um, the strength of management skills and expertise and the soft skills um, that are so important to trade working and the essential role of finance. So we have the genius of positive non-intervention, the excitement of trade, and then I want to highlight the rich veins of charity and civil society in Hong Kong. Hong Kong's tradition of volunteering um, is second to no other city in the world. Um, when there is an emergency in any part of the region or the world, Hong Kong givers are much, amongst the largest anywhere. 
the rich networks supporting our schools, our hospitals, our churches, um, the arts and a myriad of other causes um, are, are so powerful and it's the support of um, people like yourselves here today that help a voluntary organisation and a non-profit organisation like Lion and Rock come to celebrate our ninth birthday today. And I'm sure that today and this week, all around Hong Kong, there are dozens, hundreds of other events with dozens and hundreds of people turning up um, to help develop Hong Kong's rich civil society. Um, the fourth point that I'd like to highlight um, is the enlightenment that we receive from hospitality. Um, and Hong Kong has open doors, welcome to people from many places, easy visa rules and requirements, a place where people um, from other parts of China want to come and live and study in preference to the cities where often they were born, um, a destination for many from the world, around the world, coming to seek opportunity. And of course we know it's also a place respected for its rule of law by whistleblowers travelling around the world um, as well. So Hong Kong is a place um, of uh, enlightenment that we get from the people that have come from all around the world to this wonderful melting pot of experience um, where we can um, learn from others and they can learn from us. And as a part of that, the Lion Rock Institute has a very active intern program where we have people that come to us from around the world and where some Lion Rock scholars go to other places around the world um, to, to learn. And the final thing I want to talk about um, was the beauty of Hong Kong's built and natural environment. Hong Kong is just a spectacular city. I had a friend up here, or colleague from Singapore yesterday. She said, I love Hong Kong. It's so much richer. It's got so much more real life dirt. It's, um, it's a much more exciting place um, to be. And, and I think you know, the spectacular setting of the mountains, the coastline, and the natural endowment of Hong Kong is wonderful. But we also have a built environment that houses amongst the most dense population in the world. And it does it so efficiently and so well um, that I think Hong Kong's built environment is as much an achievement of humanity in this place as well. So these are the five things that I'd like to um, uh, remind you to celebrate with the rest of us in Hong Kong. The genius of non-intervention, the excitement of trade, the rich veins of our civil society and charity, our enlightenment from the hospitality to others, um, and the beauty of the environment that we're experiencing um, in the building um, here today. And uh, with that, also express our thanks to Harbour Grand for hosting um, the event. Um, this is um, both the ninth anniversary for Hong Kong, anniversary for the PEG, an important event to um, celebrate freedom um, uh, in Hong Kong. And if I could just quickly round out by saying a couple of things about the PEG. Um, in the context of the Euro um, and the problems that uh, European countries have had. The Euro is a fixed exchange rate. It has many small open economies and the lessons from the problems Europe had is that they must keep fiscal discipline. It has many small open economies that have learned the lesson that they must remain very flexible and these same economies must adjust and respond to their hinterland. And I think this is a lesson from the problems of the Euro, where all around the Eurozone, small economies, often smaller than Hong Kong, like Switzerland and Sweden, have prospered and done well, and the Eurozone fixed exchange rate economies have not, because they've remained very flexible. And so small economies like Hong Kong, if we're to keep our prosperity, must keep the flexibility um, of our labour markets, the flexibility of our economy, the fiscal disciplines um, that our guest later on tonight um, has been a champion of. Um, and I hope that you will um, join with all of us in, uh, in supporting his efforts. Um, so just finally, um, uh, to round out with further thanks to um, CLP, who have been a generous um, sponsor for us, um, Harbour Grand as well, this location, um, and uh, our gold sponsors, the Jockey Club, the Link, Power Assets, um, and Centerline and Asianomics. We're very, very grateful for your support and the support of everyone here today. Thank you very much.